I guess it's my face instead of a chart. Um, I decided to do something a little different this time because I just wanted to kind of uh, wax poetic about the market. I've got my cheat sheet in front of me here, so I'm not ashamed to glance down at my notes because I've uh, got a few things to talk about. And I, I could show charts like I normally do, but I thought I'd try something different, see how it goes. Um, so first a couple of changes. One, um, I'm not going to be pleading for you to click on ads anymore either on these videos or in comments or what have you. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of undignified. I figure if you're interested in the ads, you'll click them. So no more bugging for me. No more, no more guilt. Uh, second, and this isn't really a change, but this book is so cool. You really should buy it. Is that undignified? I don't know. But uh, I haven't sold many of these. It's weird. I've, I've written books for a long time since I was a kid, since I was 16. I've written a huge stack of books, like 22 of them or something. And uh, this is my first self-published one. And it's not just a pamphlet. There's actually a lot in here. And uh, it's really cool. And so if you're a Slope fan and you want to kind of read kind of the best of Slope, that's what I've put in there. And you know what? I'm going to try a marketing experiment right now. Because I think online they sell it for 15 bucks, you probably have to pay shipping. Send me 10 bucks and I'll autograph it and mail it to you. I'll even pick up the postage. Just, you know, I'm going to trouble you to look it up the address on the site. Just go to my contact page. Send me 10 bucks. That'll give me a couple of vintage chais. And uh, I'll send you an autograph copy. What a deal. Okay. Um, so the debt ceiling business is over, thank God. Uh, it's been a horrible distraction. I think that the resolution to it uh, is really a joke. It's, I mean, this whole kicking the can thing down the road is just in perpetuity. I am uh, a big believer in kind of the natural order of things. And, you know, I, as regular readers know, um, I believe that if uh, 2008 things had just been left to go as God intended and, uh, you know, whatever banks that were going to blow up, blew up, and uh, the Dow went down to however low it needed to go, I think we'd be firmly on the road to recovery now. Instead, uh, it's just been this huge charade going on, um, and the whole debt ceiling thing is yet another charade. And it's a real shame. It's a shame of two things. One, it's just forestalling the inevitable, and the inevitable is going to be a lot worse. And two, for big bad bears like me, it's made shorting the market exquisitely painful, especially over the past year. Um, because there's all this lurching going on back and forth, makes it tough to trade. But recent market has been a little more uh, forgiving. Um, but there's a lot of danger still on the horizon. You've got Europe, Italy, um, you've got the potential of a downgrade. I know Moody's tonight said, you know, you guys are great, we're not going to downgrade you, but you never know what's going to happen with that. And the thing is that this super committee in Congress still has to be formed, and uh, you're going to have, a, Obama's already made it quite clear that taxes are going up. I mean, he like named names. Hedge fund managers, for one thing, uh, taxes are going to go up. So that's going to be a whole other wrangle uh, this autumn. That should be interesting to watch. I um, wanted a moment on the whole analog thing. Longer term viewers know that uh, I had this big 1937-1942 analog. haven't mentioned it much lately. Some people have asked about it. Um, for those of you unacquainted with what I'm talking about, I had charted out the market from 1937 to 1942 and had found, until about a year ago, incredible parallels between what we were going through and what had been happening. And uh, the analog worked incredibly well and then it stopped working. And it's sort of like, uh, I tend to think in analogs anyway, which is a blessing and a curse. And it's sort of like if on, say, September 1, a friend of yours gave you a sheet of paper for what the 30 days of September would hold for you, day by day, a lot of detail, you know, what would happen, what you would eat, so forth. And you checked at the end of each day, you'd reveal yourself of what your friend predicted. And one, two, three, four, all the way to September 15th, everything he predicted happened just as, um, everything that happened happened just as he predicted. So for the first 15 days of September, it was uncanny. And you were amazed.
amazed. And you decide that uh, this person is some kind of sort of prophet. Um, and the 16th didn't really go, like you said. Neither did the 17th or the 18th or the 19th. And hopefully by about the 25th you'd say, well, those first couple of weeks must have been a real fluke because maybe there's not so much to this guy. Maybe the prophecy isn't uh, that magic. And that's the kind of experience I went through with this 37 to 42 thing. Because for months, it was incredible how everything would just line up. And when things started not to line up, I tried stretching and pulling and twisting and looking at different possibilities. And after a while, it became so convoluted. It's like, this has not even a passing resemblance to what's going on. So I've got uh, a, this is, I've got a thick, stack of charts that I've done. I was just thumbing through them, uh, both for me and others, about what you know, was going to happen over the years. None of them have been correct, and I, I welcome others in here too. These are not just my charts. These are a lot of different uh, predictions of all flavors. And uh, I think that uh, with so much interference going on from the Fed that what might have taken place was again, forestalled, you know, think of it in this metaphor, I mean, if you plant a tree and you ask me where the tree's going to go, uh, I might say that it's going to go up toward the sun, the street, up there to the light. And if you sneak in there each day and you bend the seedling, the small tree, each day, for a while there, the tree will be bent. And I will be wrong. And when you stop screwing around with the tree, uh, it will eventually arc itself back up. And you may wind up with a tree that looks like this, uh, but the tree will eventually go toward the truth. And uh, I believe that what I have talked about in the markets, what I see coming, is the truth. Um, and that the uh, subterfuge that the you know, Bernanke and, and Geithner and all the rest of them uh, is uh, warping that. But eventually, eventually, things are going to find their way toward that daily wall. Um, but it really sucks, you know, waiting for it. And we're seeing things lurch around because the resting of that future, the bending of that tree uh, is getting tougher for those darlings. Um, and on days like this, when the Dow fell like almost 300 points, a little truth emerges through that blade. Um, as far as myself, uh, because of the up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down nature of the market, it has really made me a cautious shorting and B has made me prone to, on occasion, going long. These have been bad things, uh, especially recently. Uh, I gave up the whole buying lots of little long positions recently because that just wasn't going well. I think we're so late in this rise that uh, that becomes very hazardous. So I decided if I'm going to go long, it's going to be like one large position like SPY or I -Y uh, IWM. And it's an insurance policy. And they almost never work out, but I sleep better at night. Like, for example, right now as I'm recording this, I have 84 shorts. They're all small. I've got one spider position, which is big. I bought it after the close. I paid 125.24 it. I'm looking right now at the ask is 125.15. So the it's down a little tiny bit, but uh, basically, you know, I just want to know if I wake up and the ES is up 15, I don't rush off to the toilet at the bar. You know, I, I want to know that uh, whatever bounce up we've got, I've got some cushion there. Now, if I wake up when the ES is down 15, well, that stinks, uh, but my 84 shorts dwarf that one spy position, and I'm happy to take the loss on the spy, which I've been doing quite nicely lately, thank you. Um, the only losses that I've really been experiencing uh, lately are those large ETFs uh, and uh, bonds. Uh, TLT, I mean, as big a TLT fan as I am, I've been amazed how strong it's been. Just amazed. 
Um, so I, I haven't been shorting it. I don't want to pay that kind of uh, you know dividend out. But I, I tried buying TBT here and there. Didn't work. Uh, so uh, I guess the flight to quality thing is still very much in place. So here's what's going on in terms of the uh, weakening market. The favorite momentum stocks have stalled. Look at CMG. Look at Netflix. Look at Apple. It's not that they're crashing or anything like that, but they have definitely stalled. They've lost their mojo. The momentum stocks, some momentum stocks, and some very uh, high-flying Nasdaq stocks are getting this bombed. And the reason I like having so many small positions is that these days, invariably, one or two of them are like real winners on a certain day. So, for example, this morning I woke up, I was short FOE. That lost 25% today. Uh, late today I shorted open, that is open table, which I use all the time. Very happy customer of it, but as a stock, it was a pretty big head and shoulders. Uh, open is down over 10% after hours. So a lot of those high flyers are getting bombed. And the IPO stocks that everybody's chattering about are, with the exception of LinkedIn, um, just jokes. Look at P, Pandora. Really look at Zillow. I mean, I, I, I know I've made a big stink about this uh, on the site, but the stock's 10 days old, and it's down like 60% from its uh, opening uh, price, you know. Price the, the first. Game. I'm not talking about the IPO price, the investment banks. I'm talking about the first print that somebody paid. I think it paid 60, and that's down to like 25 or something like that. Um, so anyway, where I'm at right now is uh, I'm about 66% committed uh, on the short side. I've got that one SPY, but the thing which scares me more than anything else is that the huge majority of stocks that I would love to short, and I've got a list of, uh, I'm seeing my watch list right now, there's 88 stocks in my watch list called the bear pen. Um, they all desperately need to bounce. They are beautiful shorts, but to enter them at these price levels is fraught with risk because I can make an argument for any of them going up 20%. Uh, so I, I go through that list every day, and unless I can tell myself, right now, this is a good risk reward, I just leave it there. Because they're dynamite looking, and they've got a, I mean, if, if you told me that you have to, you, you have to short it today, and you can't do anything for a year, I, I might just short them all, because I think in a year they'll all be a lot lower, but since I'm not, uh, foreclosed from trading them, that uh, I'd rather just wait because there's just too much upside potential on the bounce. But the bounce isn't happening. Uh, one other point that I would make clear is that it was only five days ago that the NASDAQ was at its highest level in over a decade. Isn't that, am isn't that amazing? I mean, we're all sitting around and it feels like the world's tumbled in on our heads. Uh, it feels like, you know, bear market time. Five days ago, we were at feels like lifetime highs, really. I mean, it was at the highest level since 2001. Just five days. Amazing to me that things have, have moved uh, that swiftly. But as I say, uh, once the truth is occasionally allowed to show itself, uh, things can fall quickly. And an impatient fellow like me, uh, that's what he likes about these down markets, because they are really fast. Uh, but by the same token, you can't kind of wait around uh, for the ideal time to short all this stuff. You've got to be in position because uh, of that speed. So, uh, I think that's all I've got to say. You know where my head's at on this. It's, uh, I've, got, I've got a lot of shorts, one long. I think that if we have a bounce, that's fantastic. I will benefit via my SPY long, and I will continue to uh, execute trades from the aforementioned bear pin list um, when, uh, when they reach prices that I feel are safe and sane. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, let me know what you think of this format. Um, you know what I think of the charts these days, so I just thought I'd try something different. Uh, and buy my freaking book, because it's really cool. I think you'll like it. And uh, best of luck to you. I will uh, see you again.